That's the music of Kiss from a brand new album. And uh, we are 50% of Kiss in the studio. We have uh, Gene and Ace. And uh, Gene, this is a whole new venture. I mean, not only is the group new, but it's a brand new label, too, isn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, Casablanca mm -hmm. is the name of the label. Mm -hmm. And Neil Bogart is the man responsible for it. Does he have any kind of... Um, um, tag, for instance, for your for Kiss's <clears throat> music. I mean, what do you call Kiss as far as music? If you had, if you really had to, people people have used terms like uh, thunder rock. Thunder um, rock. Yeah. Hey, I like um, that. I haven't heard that one before. <laughs> and uh, I really don't think it's a good idea to coin, um, you know, the kind of music that we're doing. Um, it's hard. It's hard edged. I think it's also easily accessible music they all have hooks it's the kind of stuff that pretty much you can sing along with and dance they're all uh, in the single range whatever they're like three minute songs mm -hmm. if, I mean, if anything then I would guess Thunder Rock yeah they're not the Moody Blues folks no no uh, Ace uh, you were uh, originally with the original group too weren't you I was the last member to join. The last member. <coughs> and did they get you through an ad in the paper, too? Well, I saw their ad. They had an ad for a lead guitarist. and uh, One with long hair, skinny, that will make it. Yeah, the bass. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what happened was they tried out about 50 guitarists, and they decided on me. I wonder I why. I was very happy uh, yeah. about the whole thing. Well, that's, isn't the... the um, the instrumentation of the group a little ordinary. Think about that for a minute. Of course, you don't have to. I do, but I, I want to um, take a 30-second pause here for some words about Army Reserve, and then I want the answer to that question. That's Kiss, and that's the name of the album. It's the name of the group. I mean, it's uncomplicated again. Now, getting back, uh, Paul, to the, uh, rather, Gene, to the instrumentation. Isn't it unusual you have nothing but guitars? It's really classic instrumentation. We go back to... I mean, keeping with what we have in mind of keeping the music easily accessible, mm. um, the easiest thing would have been to go out and spend 3000 bucks on a Moog synthesizer and then turn up the volume and, you know, but uh, we try to keep everything so that it's easily workable, so that people don't have to work at sitting in their seats and, mm. and try to figure out what we're doing. Our instrumentation is in a classic Beatle mold, although I don't, you know, I don't really think we have that much to do with the Beatles as mm. such. Uh, two guitars, bass, and drums. A lead guitarist, a rhythm guitarist, a bassist, and a drummer. And all four of us sing, all four of us write. I, uh, after seeing the group, uh, I've seen the group now three times. Um, and on the third time around, I really realized, which I hadn't the first two times, what good voices you all have. I mean, really good, fine voices. Have you had m voice training? I don't think so, no. None of them? <laughs> it would be, no. You none couldn't? Of us, none of us have, a, 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 you know, we've had art training. Yeah. Uh, a couple of the people in the band are uh, designers or whatever. The logo was designed by Ace. Beautiful. You know. Beautiful. You'll notice the S's are a bit different. Yes, and that's what makes it so unique and looks so good in rhinestones, yeah. too. I should have worn mine today. Um, now... As I mentioned before, the group's unique, and I have, I'm trying not to tip, you know, what happens on stage, because I like everybody to go and see the group, and, and they will be in, on tour, and, and see what they do. But um, we might give away a little of it, because I have to know, I mean, with all the odd, weird things that go on in the course of, uh, of the presentation, I imagine there have been some foul-ups. Sometimes it happens. What's the funniest thing that's happened to you so far with the, huh? with all your gimmicks? The uh, most, the weirdest thing I guess that ever happened to us was, very prophetically, on our first coming out, as it were, New Year's Eve, nineteen seventy three, seventy four. We did our first professional gig with uh, Blue Oyster Cult and some other nice people, and um, I don't know if people are aware of it, but I do a fire breathing thing mm -hmm. during one of the songs and uh, this, the whole side of my head caught fire i heard about that yes I didn't see that it. was i see i wasn't even aware of it at the time if it wasn't for sean delaney how'd God you put him. it out uh i didn't even know about it and sean just ran off stage and smothered me with his coat 
and I guess uh, it just went out. I didn't even know about it. At the end of the thing, Rick Derringer and some of his people came over and said, why does the bass player you know, put his hair on fire? He doesn't have to go that great far. Act. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> yeah, they thought it was part of the act. That would be kind of expensive. You'd be bald in about six weeks yeah, <laughs> if yeah. you could last that long. We're going to take a minute here for some uh, words from Army Reserve. <laughs> 